the brake rotors on this car are directional, left and right. Porsche is nice enough to put an R on the right side ones and an L on the left side ones. If your rotors aren't marked, if you're using Zimmerman's or an aftermarket rotor that's not marked, you want the, the top of the, the holes or the veins to point towards the back of the car. You can see that the veins are kind of angled, these flutes on the inside, between on the inside of the rotor. As this rotor spins this way, as the car is rolling forward, it's going to help that, that spinning is going to help evacuate the air out of the veins and help keep the brakes cool. If you have it so that it's turning the other way, that's actually going to try to scoop air from the outside and you're not going to get proper airflow through the brakes. So you have to make sure that when the wheels turn, those veins are turning kind of with the rotation of the wheel, not against the rotation of the wheel. So we're going to line the, ro the rotor up. We're going to find the, the tapered holes or the holes with the counter sinks or for our little Phillips head screws. So we're going to get that lined up, which is right here. We now have each of those holes lined up with a threaded hole for those little Phillips head screws. I'm a fan of using an anti-seize product, especially on high corrosion areas. So I'm going to kind of dip the tip of the screw in and then thread it into that hole. And they're going to tighten these down pretty snug and try to tighten them evenly as well. As it pulls the rotor onto the hub. Again, these little screws are just to hold the rotor in place when the wheels are off or for assembly. They don't have to be over tightened. You don't have to worry about stripping those uh, Phillips heads out. You just have to be just snug. That's perfect. Now we're ready to put the caliper back on. Just kind of gently get it over the edge of the rotor. Again, we're going to use our new, our new caliper mounting bolts. New one, old one. My new ones happen to have a, a 55 Torx, a T55 head as opposed to the hex head. So I'm going to have to use a different socket to put them back on. I'm also going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. This is a steel bolt. It's going into an aluminum housing. The last thing I want is some kind of corrosion between the two. So by lining this up, I can get it so I can start to spin in the first bolt. Make sure it's engaged in the threads. And then my second one. Anti seize. And I'm going to use this ratchet to just snug them up. Now that they're snug, I'm going to torque them with my torque wrench to 63 foot-pounds. That's the factory spec for them. Right there. Right there. Right when the click happens, the spring mechanism inside the torque wrench releases at the torque you said had it set at. So that's 63 foot pounds. I have the torque wrench set to 63 on its scale. Now remove my string. And I'm ready to put the new pads in. I can tell that I have not squeezed my pistons back quite far enough to get these new pads in. 
Here's a comparison. New pad, old pad. Look at the thickness difference there. See the cracking? The cracking that's starting here, and I'm actually hitting one of the rivets there. See that little shiny round spot? It's one of the rivets that's holding the pad material onto the backing plate. Now it slides right in. That's its place. Now to do the same thing to the other side. You want to try to avoid getting the tops of the pad greasy. That obviously wouldn't help performance. Getting some kind of lubricant on your friction surface. Pistons are squeezed all the way in. Pad drops into place. If you wanted to have your brake sensors wired up, you would now wire your wire through this little notch on the side of the caliper and into this little notch on the pad. Using my wire wheel on my bench grinder, I'm going to take some of the corrosion off of the outside of the brake caliper pin. Now ready to put my spring clip back on. The spring clip also has a little clip to help support that brake wire. If you wanted, you'd put this on this way probably actually. Bring that wire through the caliper, through the spring clip, maybe onto this side, one side or the other of the pad. I've also cleaned off my pin, so my pin should slide through the caliper nicely now. And it does. Now for the spring clip, you have to both press it, compress it, and then slide the pin down the, that notch at the same time. Sometimes it's a challenge to do with two hands. That one went in pretty nicely. Finally, we're going to put the little retaining clip back in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this until I see that hole. I see it. Now I can take this little clip with the aid of my needle nose pliers, push it back into place, and that prevents this this pin from sliding out. So there, brakes are changed. There's actually one more step that I'm going to do, and that is to make sure I haven't left any greasy fingerprints or anything on the on the rotor. I'm going to use a can of brake clean and a paper towel. I'm just going to spray the the surface, and just wipe it down. Get any any lubricant, any of my stuff off of there. Make sure it's clean. Do the same thing on the back side. For the back side, sometimes it's easier to spray your your rag or your paper towel first. Hold it back there. And then kind of turn the rotor. Of course, if you're so inclined, now is also a good time to clean off your caliper. Imagine if you were a concourse shower, you would take the toothbrush out at about this point and really give the caliper a very nice clean. That's good enough for me.